Recently on stream, yes, that's right, I do stream. I stream over here on YouTube, so if you're subbed to a channel and you have notifications on, you'll be able to see it. But with that little bit of self-promotion aside, I was asked, what's my mapping strategy? And how have I been leveraging the new Atlas to make money? After which, I started thinking about how to best put that into a video. The first idea was, I'd just run about 50 or 100 maps and kind of make a Grimro style, this is how much I made. Except that I'm just budget Grimro. Doubly so, since I'm not really juicing these maps all that much. So after that, I thought, well, what if I mathematically calculate out what the optimal thing to do is? Well, the problem there is, there isn't really a mathematical optimal choice. It kind of comes down to your build, what sort of content you're targeting, and several other factors. One of them being how much you want to trade for supplies. So instead, I decided that today, I'm going to present my mapping strategy. This is just what I've been doing. It's not the best possible thing. It's not the most optimal, but it is what I find fun, and hopefully you can learn something from both what I'm doing and the rationale behind it. To start with, the first step is, what maps am I running? I have one map favorited in every slot, except for the last one because I'm still too lazy to do the feared. I'm going to get around to it one of these days, probably after I hit 97 on this build, but we'll just see. That map is Ghetto. The reason for Ghetto is it has two very good div cards. The Saint's Treasure, which is an Exalt card, and Dying Anguish, which gives you a level 19, 19% quality, alternate quality gem. Dying Anguish is an incredibly common card. I get, I don't know, one every couple maps, and Saint's Treasure is also pretty common. I get one every three or four maps, sometimes less if I'm using Divination Scarabs. More on Scarabs in a bit, though. But this way, I get a little bit of extra value from my maps. I'm not using MF gear, I'm not super juicing, I'm only using polished scarabs most of the time, and sextant-wise, I'm just kind of rolling for and going. I haven't even really been bothering with blocker sextants this league, because I can't be bothered to do that much trading. And I don't want to spend all the extra chaos just to seal up a bunch and use them later. It would definitely be more optimal to do so, I'm just not bothering. In terms of master missions, most of the time I'm putting Nico on, and Delve is still very rewarding, so that is what I decided to go with. If you want to do Alva, something that I was doing for quite a while, then that's also good too. And if you decide to do Alva, I strongly suggest picking up contested development and resource reallocation on your passive tree. Now, for the rest, your Atlas passives are going to be important, so I'll include a picture here with my Atlas passives. Some quick notes. I'm taking all the Shaper Elder stuff, I'm taking the Conqueror stuff so that there's a chance to get Conqueror maps. I decided to skip the Synthesis stuff because it's not all that valuable and it takes up a lot of extra points. I'm fully invested in the Eater of Worlds stuff, although I am considering moving a couple points around to gain the two extra for pack size on the Eater of World mobs. I've got Intelligence Gathering so that I don't have to run Jun missions and I can still go kill Katarina. I am of course heavily invested in Essences because I like crafting and they're really good value. I'm very heavily invested in Harbingers because they're also very good value, they're a lot of raw currency. You can get things like Annulment Orbs, which I use for crafting, Exalt, Exalt Shards, those are always good. And Ancient Orbs, people love gambling, they buy them for Exalts, so I'm happy to have them. I'm also fully invested into Expedition because I am using Expedition Scarabs on every map. Expeditions lead to logbooks. Logbooks are, objectively, the most fun content in Path of Exile, and I will fight you if you disagree. So that's why I'm using them, and anyone who doesn't agree with that, well, they can fight me in the comments below, and I of course will win, because I have got an anime on my side. I'm also invested into Kirak missions at the moment, although I'm actually considering dropping that and going even further into more passive value, possibly picking up something for either Breaches or Legion so I can add those. And I'm invested in strong boxes because those are very good value. For the rest of my points, they kind of float around. For example, right now, I happen to be using Drawn to Power for Shrines and Abyssal Army for Abysses, but if I stop using an Abyss Scarab, I don't really have any reason to have Abyssal Army, so I'd drop that for something else. And if you're enjoying this look at my mapping strategy in Path of Exile 317 Arch Nemesis, then be sure to leave a like on the video, sub to the channel for more Path of Exile content, and ring the bell to be notified whenever I upload or whenever I go live on stream. And if reading's more of your thing, or you just hate my voice for whatever reason, there's a written summary of this video available over on my Patreon. Like always, it's not new information, it's the same stuff I talk about, but you can read it at your own pace, and there's a few pictures here and there to make up for the things that I can't easily explain in text, like what my atlas tree looks like. But now, on to my scarab choices. So, there's two scarabs that I'm willing to buy. That is Expedition Scarabs, because I want all the logbooks, and Harbinger Scarabs, because Harbinger are really good value. For the rest of the scarabs, I kind of rotate through just what I have, 
So sometimes I'll be using things like Abyss Scarabs. Abyss is really good for EXP and leveling up. If I get a Breach Sextant, I'll use my Breach Scarabs. On the other hand, if I get a Legion Sextant, then I'll be using my Legion Scarabs. If I don't have any specific Sextant mods that encourage me to use a certain Scarab, then I often default back to something familiar. In this case, in one slot, I tend to like to use something that adds value to my map rather than adds mods or adds mobs, which would be something like a Divination Scarab. Divination Scarabs are great because it's going to mean a lot more Div cards, things like those Dying Anguish or alternatively Saint's Treasure. It becomes a lot more common with Divination Scarabs, and even the polished ones aren't that expensive. On the other hand, if I'm running low on maps, I can use Cartographer Scarabs. If I'm out of Nico missions and I want to delve more, I can use Sulfite Scarabs. None of these things really add mobs, but they definitely add value in their own ways. But because I have a 5 slot map device, something that you should definitely have unlocked by now, and if not, make the investment and run some 4 ways, I need a 4th Scarab. And in this case, the fourth scarab that I prefer to use is an Ambush Scarab. Ambush Scarabs give you additional strong boxes. This means there's more chances to get an operative strong box, which drops more scarabs, thus meaning you have to buy less. Or, alternatively, because they're all corrupted from passives I have on my Atlas tree, then I get a bunch of Sixlings, which are Divines. I have a Divine Addiction. We're not going to talk about that. That's a topic for another video. But needless to say, they always find a good home. Always use an Expedition Scarab, it can be rusted or higher. Higher is, of course, better. I wouldn't really spend on Winged. Winged is amazing, but it's way too expensive to justify, in my opinion. Also, always use a Harbinger Scarab. Again, higher is better. In this case, I suggest sticking around Polished. I don't really think Gilded are worth it at 10c each. It probably is, especially if you're running Beyond on every map, but if you're not, then don't worry too much. From there, add something like a Polished Divination Scarab, an Abyss Scarab, Abyss can go all the way up to Gilded, last I checked they're pretty inexpensive. Then from there, add something that is map relevant, so if you have a Legion Sextant, add a Legion Scarab. If you have a Blight Sextant, add a Blight Scarab. If you have a Metamorph Sextant, you don't really need to worry about Metamorph Scarabs. If you have a Breach Sextant, use a Breach Scarab, and so on and so forth. If you don't have any of that, I often default to something like Polished Abyss for EXP, or Divination for more Div card drops. And then finally, I round it out with the Ambush Scarab. If you only have a 4-slot map device, the Ambush Scarab is the one I drop, at least for the time being. Finally, I mentioned before I was invested in Kirak, and part of that is taking Shaping the Valleys. This is 10% increased quantity of items in areas affected by Fortune Favors, 10% rarity, 10% pack size, and maps have a chance to be a higher tier. The maps have a chance to be a higher tier isn't too important, it's nice for sustain, but definitely not needed. But 10% quant and 10% pack size is absolutely amazing. This has saved me so much money and added so much value that I would strongly suggest using it unless you're using a dedicated map farming strategy like Beyond with a Headhunter. And finally, what do I do for Arch Nemesis itself? Well, I have a video on Innocence Touched, I have a video on Opulent, and I have a full Arch Nemesis recipe guide. If you want to know more about how I'm handling Arch Nemesis, go check that out because how I handle it hasn't changed since I made that video. So this strategy might not be the very best thing you can do. It might not be the most profit per hour, and it might not be right for all builds. But this is the mapping strategy that I've been using that I've found highly successful. I like it because I get to do the content I enjoy, things like delving and things like expedition. I get a lot of essences to craft with and sell for profit. I get a lot of currency from Harbingers, also to sell for profit. I can juice up my maps to a reasonable level, and I don't really need to buy two scarabs, which is a huge plus because trading for scarabs is kind of annoying unless you have a trader to buy them for you. So that's my mapping strategy based on the content I enjoy. If you take nothing else out of this video, if you disagree with every single choice I've made, remember this. You should be running the content that you enjoy even if it's not the most profitable all the time. Because at the end of the day, the thing that's going to keep you playing as you grind and as you reach your goals is enjoying the content you're doing as you're grinding. If you absolutely hate Delirium or if you find Blight miserable, even if it's really profitable, don't do it. And if you want to see my Atlas tree, I will leave a link to that down in the description. But with that, I only have one question for you. What's your mapping strategy in 317? I'm curious what other people are doing, and if you have any tips or tricks, be sure to let me know. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments below, or join the Discord where you can ask questions, get build help, and hang out with the community. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. They're awesome, and they get to show it by having their name on screen in the credits of all my videos. So if you want to see your name here, be sure to check the link in the description. For more general gaming content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, and if you want a water bottle or a cool shirt, I have a link to my official merch shop in the description. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.